loud, but I get the music to cut off too. Fans, welcome to the field, your USF men's soccer team. The University of South Florida, in partnership with the student body, alumni, and fans have initiated the Be Respect the Bull campaign, aimed at promoting a higher level of pride, sportsmanship, and honor. Please welcome the players, coaches, and fans of our opponent with great respect, and the wonderful hospitality that can and will be the hallmark of bulls everywhere. Florida the site tonight as the top two teams in the American Athletic Conference when it comes to men's soccer set to collide both at 3-0-0 on the table. UConn one of the stingiest when it comes to defense across the country with Scott Levine back in frame this past week for a fourth time already this year named goalkeeper of the week within the conference. Meanwhile, USF, conversely, you talk about the defense of UConn. How about that prolific offense of the home squad Bulls? We take a look at the table. 
how good have UConn and USF been? Well, they're keeping top 25 SMU in that third spot so far here in the standings. UConn and USF each looking for the full three points here tonight. Hi, everyone. Lincoln Rose, Roland Garensway with you. And, Roland, we talk about that dynamic offense versus defense. USF at home tonight against UConn. Well, both teams have been brilliant so far this season, especially in conference play. This is a pivotal game for both clubs uh, looking to get that conference championship. Let's take a look at your keys to the match. First up for the visitors from Stores, Connecticut. Well, for UConn, they need to stay compact defensively. This UCF side hasn't lost in over a month and are averaging three goals a game in that time. They also need to diversify their attack. Abdu Bakke Jam has scored seven of UConn's 12 goals this season. His teammates need to step up and contribute in the final third. And for the home side? Well, for USF, it's a continued confidence in the attacking third. As I mentioned earlier, the Bulls are scoring goals in buckets. Uh, they need to put UConn under pressure early and continue to have that killer instinct in front of goal. Also need to stay positionally disciplined. Although they're without a loss in six matches, the Bulls, this Bulls side has only kept a clean sheet in one of those. Their midfield need to make sure to track back and defend against that dangerous Husky counterattack. Well, you mentioned the year that Abdu Baki Jam has had, but how about another option for the Huskies? When it comes to Petridis, we saw him last week in a great matchup against Tulsa. It was his birthday, and he had the game winner 1-0. Absolutely. He's just a great player, an all-rookie team member last season. He, provide, he provides tons of width and pace down the left-hand side. Uh, I'm looking for him to take off pressure uh, from John up front. You know, USF is always good for an international-looking roster, and when you have a German like Bill Hart, you're going to come up with an event like tonight. It's Oktoberfest. Well, this kid is incredible. He's got five goals, five assists in just nine games. Developed in RC Union Berlin's Youth Academy. He's extremely comfortable on the ball and in front of goal. Huskies and goals perfect in the American thus far. Each looking for three points to remain atop the table beyond ADA. This is a classroom. This is a lab. This is a study break. This is family. This is home. This is Yukon. There are other people just like you, driven, determined, those who use passion to spark creation, others who are ready to unite and discover together. It all starts with you and continues with us, the University of South Florida. for the playing of our national anthem. We played the anthem for every country represented by players out there on the field. Uh, we might have to push back the start of this kick another couple of hours, but thrilled to have you with us. Beautiful evening now on this Friday night, Tampa, Florida, the site at Corbett Soccer Stadium. Lincoln Rose, Roland Garen's way with you. And Roland, uh, again, two teams have found different paths to the top of the standings here in the American. Let's check in with the third member of our broadcast team tonight, Eric Lopez in the stands. 
Well, Lincoln, it's a big match here, big atmosphere, and look for possession of the ball to be very important, especially early. I talked to the UConn people earlier this week. They want to control possession. USF likes to attack and attack in the first half. They've outshot their opponents 79-53 to in the first half. They've averaged three goals a game in their last six matches. UConn has had six shutouts as a team. They don't want to fall behind against USF. Both teams have downplayed the, the, the significance of this matchup, but don't make, make any mistakes about it. This is a huge step for the rights to win the regular season title and host the conference tournament. Back to you, Lincoln. All right, thank you very much, Eric. Again, moments away from kick, there are the Bulls in the all-white kits tonight. As Eric alluded to, USF, an early starting squad. Nine goals in the opening half of matches this year, conceding six. While UConn has been even a tad stingier, the Huskies have only allowed two first-half goals compared to six. They are front runners, and that has allowed their defense to solidify for the rest of the match and bunker down and defend that advantage. Well, that's usually their strategy. They do like to sort of sit deep and sort of hit on the counter. Uh, so it's like a contrast of styles today for both, but both teams are equally talented, and, you know, it can go either way today. That's what's going to make it fun. You saw in the keeper's kit for UConn again, Scott Levine making his 64th consecutive start and goal for UConn, and that's not even the record for the program. Josh Ford, the former Husky standout, 85 straight matches between those pipes. Well, Levine, he's just such a big factor in every single game. He made some big saves in their last conference game versus Tulsa. I know he's going to come up big for UConn again today. So UConn sneaks down to the peninsula here in the Sunshine State. A little bit of rain earlier on, but it looks like a great evening for collegiate soccer here in the American. We have been spoiled with some great matches already here in the first half of conference play. As the Huskies will quickly send one over the top in towards the offensive third. It'll simply be a goal kick coming up. First chance to see Christian Knight, the junior out of Odessa, Florida. The finance major spent his first couple of years nearby at the University of Tampa. Redshirt in his first year started in his final year as a second year freshman. Uh, the Bulls, of course, a variety of new names, including their head coach. We'll have a chance to see in a little bit here, Bob Butehorn. First year at the helm of the Bulls. So out wide onto the boots of Garris. Garris is making his 12th start, the fifth year senior out of Portland, Connecticut, for a friendly tap back to Levine. Hauser Ramsey back from Greenberg. And a stress free opportunity here for Knight. Christian Knight won this job ever since that Loyola Marymount match. And since he has been in the pipes after this team started 1 3 0, they have since now gone unbeaten 5 0 1, including a perfect 3 for 3 in conference matchups. As again, Knight, the junior, the newcomer, taking over. Most recently called upon to make six saves against Tulsa. We saw UConn against Tulsa back on the last match of September since then. A road trip to Cincinnati, and just prior to that, a collision with the number three team in the nation in Maryland. As they'll send it back along their back line. UConn doing a decent job when they're in possession to sort of stay patient and try to play defeat. Both teams are actually trying to do that, but I think UConn have done a good job at pressuring USF when they have the ball at their back line, as they're doing now. Look at them try to surround the ball when USF have it. We're seeing here another strong challenge coming in from UConn, a legal one, says the referee, and Petridis has the ball down this left-hand side. And Petridis tripped up. They'll play on. Out on the left wing, looking for somebody to play with. Nobody home. Again, if UConn has it their way, this is a 1-0 final at the end of the night. USF would much prefer a 3-2 affair. As for the back line, tracking that down is Corey Cupid making his second appearance. First start on this season, the freshman now to Trinidad. He had to be thrilled the other night. Absolutely. His thrill is our pain. 
Huskies from 22 and nothing to it. First save of the night for Knight. And that was Bilhar who put the challenge in there, doing some good defensive work coming back, helping to defend that shot for USF. We're going to see it here. He's all over the attacker there, and he put in, he held him back a little bit, lucky not to draw a foul. Abdu Baki Jam trying to check in with what would have been his eighth goal of the year. Five of his first seven goals have proven to be game winners. And here is Baki Jam, a quick tap back. They have numbers. Huskies have an open frame and an advantage in Tampa. The punctuation from Josh Burnett, his first goal here in 2017 for the freshman. Well, he finished that last one with a plum, going one on one with the keeper. We're going to see it here. It's a big throw in. Good control there to flick it onto Jam and a nice little back heel to Burnett. Takes a few touches, keeps his composure, puts it near post, and that was a beautiful finish. UConn go one up early. What a great touch off the heel from Abdu Baki Jam. We talk about how he's a finisher. But he's more than happy to pick up his second assist on the season with that touch. Well, as I said in the beginning of the game, you know, his teammates really need to step up and sort of support him in attack. He's, again, he scored seven goals, seven of their uh, 12 goals this season so far. So Burnett, the freshman, st uh, stepping up and finishing into the back of the net. So there is UConn with the early strike. A little reversal of roles. USF will be playing bo from behind here at home early on. A battle of not just unbeatens, but neither team has been pushed to a draw in conference play either. As a foul, will win this ball for UConn at midfield. Now the whistle on Ricardo Gomez, the senior out of Gainesville, Georgia. Gomez was your offensive player of the week for his performance, two goals against Tulsa this past week. So Huskies are up a goal thanks to the finish from Burnett. And Huskies have applied some pressure early on. Simply a goal kick coming up here for Christian Knight. Knight allowing one and a quarter goals per contest. Just the ninth goal he's allowed so far, and this is seventh match. You see those titles here in the American 2013-2016. So last year, it would be Tulsa and UConn in the championship final. With Tulsa for a third straight year winning the automatic bid of the NCAA tournament out of the American in the shootout. After a draw match. Great work from John here. Right footed delivery looking for that back post. It didn't bend and just stayed too high as he was looking for Apostle. Well, I think he was actually going for goal here. It's a very ambitious effort, looking to curl one in back post. Trying to find the roof of that net. And John, he does such a great job at running down the channels. He's got a, he's a workhorse up front there. He's got an engine on him. He's a very exciting player to watch. Both of these teams on six nights of rest. Again, UConn was at Cincinnati a week ago. All the Bulls were at Tulsa. UConn in blue, the home squad Bulls in white. And we mentioned the fans given an added reason to come out. Tonight dubbed Socktoberfest in Tampa with the Bulls. In part inspired by Adrian Bilhart, who just had the touch there, the freshman from Berlin. They had a little commercial online mentioning that there were brats for sale and a variety of beverages to sample. And yes, uh, Lederhosen t-shirts, something that Ray Reed opting not to participate in, at least not during the match. Obviously, that's a nice style there. Everyone loves Lederhosen. You look at the second line right there, your number two winningest active coach in the NCAA among Division I head coaches, four national titles for Reed. Meanwhile, this is one of those reasons why Abdu Baki jumped. It's 2-0 UConn. What a finish from Chom. That was unbelievable. One-on-one -on -one with the keeper. Yeah, 
And we're going to see it here again. Just beats a USF defender for pace. Again, just keeping composure in front of goal. Slots it home like he's done it before. And it's 2-0 to UConn. You said it before. It's been a reversal of roles here. Usually USF like to push the pace and set the tempo. But UConn going up two goals early on have really pushed the place and uh, played the game at their tempo today. The junior out of Senegal with his eighth match in a little under 11 and a half contests so far this year. He's been the leading scorer for UConn the past two seasons, looking to do it again. He had a stretch earlier this year, four straight matches with a goal. He's done that twice in his career. Had the game winner against Cincinnati in the 79th minute in their last matchup. He's hoping that goal does not prove to be the game winner. He, he would not mind this being a clean sheet for his man back on the goal line in Scott Levine. We're seeing John, he's just a perfect, perfect storm of skill sets. You know, he's absolutely uh, technical and, and pacey and can finish and just such a talent. Burnett receives the push from behind. To They're going to play on. That was a clear foul by the... Wow. Perhaps no sympathy for the Huskies already up two goals. And just a lob into the 18 across the face of the penalty area. As they'll dance on the wing. So goals already from Burnett and of course the likely suspect in Abdubanki jump. And Christian Knight's been busy early on here on his home pitch. Had an easy save early on. Burnett with some struggles. He may still be ailing from that collision when he was tapped from behind the last trip down. He was clearly pushing behind. We're going to see it here. Clear push. Not sure what his ailment could be. It could have just got the air knocked out of him on, on that fall there. You want to take my wife? Right now being assisted by Gabriel Pfeffer, the senior from Uruguay. As well as his teammate in Shek Stefan Coley, one of the two natives of Senegal. Burnett taking deep breaths. It does look like he got the air knocked out of him a bit. I think the last time I had the air knocked out of me, I was getting orange peel slices in Capri Suns back <laughs> In youth soccer it's been a minute but a clear foul in my opinion and you can see he falls kind of straight on his chest there right into that area where you know you get the air knocked out of you and looks like that's all that happened good sign to see him back up huskies resume again toss it back over to usf who had possession when the match was halted a moment ago for those of you who tuned in late well all you missed were two goals not even 10 minutes into this match, and it's the Huskies who have found the offensive spark. This is just their second multi-goal game in conference play. The other, their opener against Temple 2-0. On the ball for the Bulls is Farias. Bradley Farias, the senior out of Indian Town, Florida. Started the first two years of his career at Campbell. All of a sudden, this takes some pressure off of Levine. Levine, you see in the neon kit with a few adoring fans behind him in that green. Head coach for the Bulls, Bob Butehorn, in his first year, he was hired from Florida Gulf Coast, the team that beat USF last year in the first round of the NCAA tournament in Tampa. And I say beat. They played to a draw. They won in a shootout. But he actually beat them in a matchup one-on-one. -on -one during the regular season last year as well, they said, that's enough. We're making this man our manager. Get on our team now. Let's get some W's. He knows how to recruit Florida. And, of course, at USF, an international recruiting base as well. Butehorn on that 1981 National Championship squad at the University of Tampa. I noted last year a win and a draw against the Bulls. They would go on to lose, talking about Florida Gulf Coast to North Carolina and Chapel Hill in the second round. A 
he would guide Florida Gulf Coast in his decade to four NCAA tournaments. Just a fantastic resume. I know they're thrilled to have him, obviously, early dividends at 3-0-0 in the American this year with the Bulls. Jackson will tap it back. Able to keep it in play. Rosales, Jonathan Rosales, the sophomore from right here in the Sunshine State. Andrew Garris pestering Avion Flanagan. Trying to work that ball away. And the Huskies are on it. I'll do Baki Jom looking for Burnett. But Bulls doing a nice job. Had numbers back. Again, Lincoln Rose, Roland Garensway, and Eric Lopez, our sideline reporter with you here today on the American Digital Network. The Bulls, six wins, three losses, and a draw overall. The Huskies, six wins, three defeats, and two draws. But most importantly, here in conference play, through three matches, both are perfect with the full nine points. So far, I've been very impressed with the work rate of this UConn team. Doing a great job in the midfield, as we're seeing now. We're seeing the pressure on the ball whenever UConn have it, whenever USF have it, excuse me. We're just, I love the hustle from this these Huskies. Again, you and I saw UConn in stores. Beautiful pass up ahead. Petridis in a foot race. Will collect. Tries to put it on his right boot. It's stripped away. That was great one-on-one -on -one defending there. Yeah, Gabriel Pfeffer up to the task. Again, the senior out of Uruguay. We're seeing the pace that UConn possess up front. Petridis just breaking forward, taking his defender one-on-one, -on -one, which, is, which is what you want from him, but it was brilliant defending from Pfeffer. It's amazing how an offensive mindset and game plan can change when all of a sudden you look up and you have a 2-0 advantage to your name. Well, it just gives you so much confidence. It sort of breaks the ice in a way, especially when you get it so early on. You know, every player usually comes into every game with some sign, once some sort of nerves, you know. But once you break the ice that way and score an early goal, um, I mean, you just know that, hey, man, we can beat these guys. Now, obviously, no reason for despair for the Bulls right now. Their fans are accustomed to seeing them give up a couple of goals on a given evening and still outscore their opponent. Well, the positional discipline of UConn so far is making the Bulls sort of result, result, resort, excuse me, to long balls, just running out of ideas in possession. Throw in will come from Dylan Greenberg, preseason all-conference defender, the fourth-year junior. But as I noted, the Bulls so far this year in conference play have not scored fewer than three goals in a conference match. Three against UCF, against Tulsa, and five against Cincinnati here in Tampa. Well, they haven't been dangerous so far, but make no mistake, this is a high-powered offense. They have a dangerous front three. Uh, they're just a dangerous team. So UConn, I mean, it really speaks to how disciplined and how, how physical they've been so far to really shut them down. And that is the first time that Scott Levine has been able to touch the ball in quite some time. If that was, he had gone any longer, likely we're going to charge him for a ticket. And that was Bilhar, who had a nice turn, got into the 18, tried to put a dangerous ball across the six-yard box, but again, Levine there making an easy, get, an easy save. And you just never know for a goalkeeper that much inactivity, how alert they will be when a ball comes at them, but he's able to interact that time. No worries. That's what separates the good from the great. You know, sometimes you get these goalkeepers that will maybe switch off. He'll stay active by communicating with his back line, keeping them informed. But even those defenders have not been tested very often tonight. This midfield and up front, Huskies have applied pressure. They'll give this ball back. A great venue for soccer here in Tampa. Corbett Soccer Stadium. As the Bulls and Huskies meeting up tonight. Decent chance they'll meet again at the conference tournament. Remember, we don't know where the conference tournament will be until... The, Often that final weekend, thanks to the parity in this league and how competitive it is, you often are playing for that number one seed on your final day of the regular season. That's what makes this conference so exciting. You never want to see one or two teams run away with it. Every team being able to beat the other one. Again, we're seeing UConn put tons of pressure surrounding the ball whenever USF have it. It was just last year we had a broadcast final match of the regular season and had to send our crew 
not knowing where the final championship tournament would be. So they just headed east, and then we would give them the final directions of which exit on the highway to take, depending on how it all play out. Huskies on the road tonight. So far, so good for the men from stores. Has the ball right now with the Bulls going through Ricardo Gomez. Again, two goals against Tulsa. Free kick and a penalty kick. And Sheck Stefan Curry able to send that one back up through the midfield. And they're just going to make the Bulls run back for a toss. USF last year, a 10 win season going 6 1 0 in conference play. They would lose in the championship to Tulsa on PKs. And mentioned ultimately fall in the first round of the NCAA tournament against Florida Gulf Coast. Out on the wing, able to collect. This is Jackson, one on one. Able to step back, ball on his left boot, fires and denied by Levine. Well, Jackson, what an individual effort and great save from Levine. That's the most pressure they've been able to apply on that Huskies back line, specifically on the keeper, Levine. Brilliant effort from Jackson to lose his man. And more often than not, you would take that exact same shot and expect for it to find the back of the net. Jackson did a great job to beat his defender. Deep one way, then the other, then the other again. But Levine coming out and staying strong, making himself big, comes up with a save. They go back to him. As this will be wide, scooped up by Levine. You see the skill set here in this USF side. Angers coming in from the right-hand side. Brilliant save from Levine. And Petrie is pouring forward after that. So the Bulls with multiple good looks. Each ending with Jackson. Let's see if the Bulls can build another opportunity like they had a moment ago. <laughs> Bulls will be the first to step into their reserves. As for USF, Tomas Gublok, the Canadian out of Hamilton, Ontario. As he checks in for Bradley Farias. Wait till you're not on. Up top. Gublok this year, a couple of goals, two assists, making just his second appearance off of the bench, his 10th appearance overall this year. A little over 500 minutes as Levine again able to squeeze another one in. I think the Bulls so far need to be a bit more patient in possession. UConn happy to just let them have the ball when they have it back in their center backs the past few minutes. You like to see a midfield drop deep and sort of make himself available and start to sort of build from the back rather than resorting to long balls. We're seeing it right here, UConn putting on a clinic of how to do it. They'll swing it right through the middle. Up onto the boots of Soleil. Now back to Burnett who has your game opener. First goal of the night, followed by Abdu Bakijam trying to return the favor. And able to squeeze that ball in is Christian Knight with the pressure coming from Jump. That was a silky little pass, though, from Burnett. You see the sort of chemistry he and Jom have up front. All the Huskies were looking to make it 3-0. After withstanding an attack from the Bulls a few minutes ago. We see Burnett coming in from that number 10 role, trying to trying to slide in Abu Bakke Jam. Jam's quick, but Knight even quicker off his line. If Knight does not secure that ball in his fingertips, Abu Bakke Jam probably has a brace. 
You see a slight breeze here in Tampa at the moment in the face of the Bulls. Not affecting play here. Directions from the near touchline from Bob Butehart. Six match unbeaten spell is on the line tonight for the Bulls down two nothing. Their last loss was at Creighton. Again, they had a slow start. They won their opener. They would drop the next three. But since then, a change in goal and a change in results. Seems like the Bulls just have no idea what to do when they're in possession. UConn just plugging those holes defensively in, in the midfield. That is saying something, again, considering how prolific this Bulls offense has been. And we will stop playing. And at the moment, no flash of color coming out of the pocket, just a conversation with Trey Jackson. We're going to see it here again. Nice first touch there, but obviously a, a foul from Jackson there. up with Sheck Stefan Coley. A lot of numbers push forward for UConn from the wing. Cross goes in and the finish will just go wide off the right foot of Apostle. That was beautiful build up play again here from UConn. A nice dink ball into Apostle. And he just side, tries to side foot it back post. Unfortunately, he doesn't get a lot on it. And it goes wide. U.S. effort let off again. That whole back of the frame exposed. But Apostle just could not find the angle. Been really impressed with UConn so far today. You saw those numbers pouring forward, making themselves available in the box. But they're also being uh, disciplined in the midfield to get back and plug those holes. Just putting on a clinic so far today. Petridis drawing attention, able to step through the tackle. You can sort of see the difference in possession when UConn are on the ball. They look confident, they look decisive, they have their heads up. You see the movement off the ball as well. Each team member is making himself available. No one afraid to be on the ball and be in possession. First chance a moment ago there to see Jacob Hauser Ramsey with a touch, and that's always a good sign when your back line does not have its name called very often. The Native of Seattle, Jacob Hauser Ramsey, your American Defensive Player of the Week this past week. Of course, Scott Levine right behind him again was your goalkeeper of the week. As this back line for UConn has been stingy, but look, your best defense again has been a great offense for UConn. Well, it's also just, just their work rate in the midfield. There's a commitment to defend as well. You know, everyone wants to score a goal. Everyone wants to get an assist, but... Not a lot of people are positionally disciplined, especially in the midfield, to sort of track back and run with your run with your with your uh, the opposing attacking players. Scoo block that time just was outnumbered by UConn. As the ball resides with Gomez, again two goals against Tulsa for Gomez, both essentially offset pieces. Midway through this opening half, looking for a turn. Left boot delivery, denied, and they won't even get a corner kick out of it. Ball still in play in the 18. Levine back on his line with a little bit of help. And it'll remain 2-0 here in Tampa. I couldn't tell, but it looked like the ball hit the post there. Loose ball in the box for USF, and it does come off the outside of the post. Very close for, for making it 2-1. So simply a goal kick here for Levine. And that's as close so far as USF has come. Eliminating this potential clean sheet. Well, of course, in stores, you've got the goal patrol that hangs out behind the opposing keeper. Levine is hearing it from behind him. 
where you love to see that kind of support from your fellow students. You know, football and maybe basketball get the most attention, but whenever you see a decent crowd for soccer, it always puts a smile on your face. As Avion Flanagan, by the way, who did hit that post, but it remains 2-0. Opening half in Tampa. Here on the American Digital Network, Lincoln Rose, Roland Karensway, Eric Lopez with you. Look forward to hearing from both coaches before this match is complete. You got to say the coach from UConn is going to be the happier of the two, ex executing the game plan to perfection so far. Over the top, Levine off his line and a collision. And he's now going to weigh his options, get back to his goal line. And he has some blue shirts there to pick up the slack. Some uncharacteristic, indecisive play there from Levine. Usually a big body in there who commands his box, but we're going to see it here. It's another long ball from the Bulls. And Levine, not, sh not knowing whether or not to come out, eventually comes out late, runs into his own defender. And it's Bill Hart who gets on the end of that. Fortunately for UConn, it comes to nothing. Hey, you'd love to call a foul there, but it's your own man. And that's true, and that's, that's what happens when, uh, you know, you have two players that, uh, you know, are just indecisive. Should I go? Should I not go? Uh, one of those players has to take command and call for it. So the Bulls have been knocking on the door, still looking for that first goal. Back to Gomez. They'll chip one. And Levine, seven yards off his line, able to squeeze that one in on the fly. You see the difference from when the Bulls are on their front foot compared to when the Huskies are on their front foot. Only one or two players in the box there for USF, whereas when UConn get forward, there's four or five players in the box. Levine not cheated on that kick, showing off his leg. The Bulls are back at it. Jacob Hauser Ramsey able to intervene. One of the captains for this group. I'll do Bonky Jump. Right now, white shirts have gotten back. UConn looking to build. Very good patient play from UConn. Greenberg across as he was looking over to Apostle. Bonky Jump will fire one right into a pair of bulls. It bounces right back. Husky is still on it. You love the fearlessness from Jom there. Choosing to take that shot first time. All of that on the right half of the pitch. See if they try something here on the near side. Good, tough play there in the midfield. As Munir Soleil finally just gets caught up in traffic. And the Bulls back with Jackson. Down by a pair with 17 minutes to go till halftime. Giving it back over to UConn. Burnett on it in the circle. And we will have a substitution for the Huskies. Or no, they're going to come out. Oh, and there's your evidence. As Munir Soleil, ill, the sophomore. No one's going to want to slide tackle there. So the Huskies jumped out early. 2-0. Josh Burnett with his first goal on the year, and then the familiar source, Abdu Baki Jom. It has the Huskies up 2-0. Just their second multiple goal performance in conference play, a run in which they still have not allowed a goal in the American. This could work to USF's advantage here. Gaffer has a minute to have a word with his team. Talk about tactics and what they've been doing right, what they've been doing wrong. As I said before, UConn putting on a clinic of how proper football should be played. 
Midfield doing a great job of tracking back and keeping possession. And then pouring forward in transition to try to get to a three goal, a three goal lead. Ray Reed asking him, what did you have during your pregame meal? Was it the Alfredo? Because I had the Alfredo. make it clear I'm not an expert lip reader that may not have been the conversation looks like he's saying I'll be fine I'll be fine wonder if he can go on here Again, play stopped in the final 17 minutes of the opening half. I wonder if they're going to do anything about that, uh, that vomit on the field. Well, you've got Apostle still checking out the area for UConn. Probably saying, uh, can we get someone over here? I don't know if I want to play on this. As Soleil looks like he's ready to come back on when they'll whistle him in. <laughs> Top two teams in the American meeting here this evening. Each three wins to show for their first three matches in conference play. And it has them ahead of top 25 SMU, which is in third right now in the standings. Again, moments ago, Soleil ill. And you just have to imagine that was something from the pregame meal that didn't settle well with him. Oh, well, you love his attitude, come, trying to come back on and still play. Roland Garensway with you and fortunately we have our uh, crack reporter and Eric Lopez down there near the pitch. I'm sure he is already investigating the matter. But the Huskies have the benefit on the road tonight. Up 2-0. Huskies have now outscored their opponents this year 8-2 in the first half. Get a look at Jonathan Rosales, the sophomore. I have a feeling UConn is not comfortable with a two-goal advantage knowing how prolific USF's offense has been this year. Well, tonight's matchup, part of our extensive coverage here on the American Digital Network. In fact, Roland, you and Kit McConico yesterday, women's soccer up in stores, Connecticut, SMU, the visiting squad against the Huskies women. Absolutely, and it was an exciting matchup there. Both teams maybe not performing exactly they wanted, they wanted the way they wanted to this season, excuse me. UConn doing the better, sitting mid-table in the conference, did get the W. We take a look at our table here for the men. Again, UConn and USF, both the head of SMU at 3-0-0. Tulsa was off to a nice start in conference. They could easily be 2-1. A great matchup in stores last week against UConn. But UConn found that goal from Petridis, the birthday boy, getting the goal for the game winner. And all of a sudden, a couple breaks just haven't gone the way of the Golden Hurricane. Back there, 1-2. and two. But you just aren't going to count out Tulsa. They have won the last three conference tournament titles in the NCAA automatic bid that has resulted from that all three years in a shootout following an overtime draw. Well, that's an impressive record, and they're really only six points off the top. It's a tight, tight conference this year. Again, it's what makes it exciting. And uh, this one's been an exciting one so far, too. 
UConn would do itself a great service if it could hang on here on the road and pick up three points. Their remaining matchups at home against UCF, home against Memphis, and then on the road to close things out in Dallas against SMU. While the Bulls, you look at their remaining schedule at Memphis, at home here against SMU, and then on the road at Temple. Now you have to imagine this was one of the key dates circled on their calendar as both of them already with Tulsa in their rearview mirror with victories over the Golden Hurricane. It's the remaining big test for both of them. Definitely, and like we said in the buildup, you know, they're both so evenly matched, but today you've seen UConn just really come out firing, full of confidence away from home. And USF sort of just coming out a bit flat. SMU will have a chance again to prove its top 25 worth as it still has both of these programs on its remaining schedule in its last two matches of conference play. As you see, they treat the area where we saw Soleil fall ill. Those are some nice teammates. <laughs> Ray Reed entering his third decade at the helm of the Huskies. Again, the second winningest active coach in Division I. Putting some national championships under his belt. We well, can see why he's got this UConn team playing some beautiful football today. Committed to sort of playing the feet, being patient in possession, building from the back, putting great pressure whenever they're not in possession. Second straight year that UConn has started conference with three wins through the first three matches. Now, of course, Ray Reed recalls last year they would then not win another match with three losses and a draw. And then a first round conference tournament elimination by Tulsa 2 0. A team they had beaten during the regular season. They are off to a nice start here in terms of finally able to get to perhaps 4 0 0. There is a lot of soccer remaining as we are back underway in Tampa. 16 and a half to go in this first half. Huskies found their first two goals early in this one. Burnett and Abdu Baki John. Your goal scorers for the Huskies so far today. That's a good defensive effort there from USF coming across that back line to head it away from Apostle. Now USF can look to counter and sort of try to keep possession, try to make a goal here before halftime. Some aggressive play there down the left-hand side and it's a free kick for USF. Let's see what they can do in this free kick opportunity. This is their first set piece opportunity so far this game. They have some height, we're gonna see it here again. Decent first touch. Again, two players around the ball is always for UConn. Unfortunately, they give away a foul in a dangerous area. One of the maybe, one of the smaller weaknesses of USF is their height. It looks like UConn have the advantage there. This is going to need to be a quality service in the box in between that six yard box and the penalty area. I have not seen a goal since early in the eighth minute when the Huskies went up 2 0. Bulls looking to find their first entry on the scoreboard. That was Bill Hart who took that. It was a bit of a lofted ball. You like to see those so close to the 18 yard box. You like to see those whipped, whipped in with pace at that back post. So if no one touches it, potentially it could go in. USF has had more opportunities as of late, including being denied by the woodwork. And some well-deserved saves by Scott Levine. At least two quality stops already. A free kick here as we're back underway. We're gonna see it again. Definitely a foul. Again, encouraging to see Munir Soleil able to continue. They'll continue to play this ball. Never clips the inline. 
Pfeffer will finally stop it. Swing it out to Aiden Bauer Marr, the freshman from Waterdown, Ontario, Canada. No shortage of Canadians on both the women's and men's side here in the athletic, American Athletic Conference, no matter what team you're talking about. Hey, you understand the trip to Stores, Connecticut isn't too bad, but heading down to Tampa, Florida, it's a little bit longer of a walk. Bit of a culture and weather shock, I'd say. Thirteen minutes to go until we reach halftime. Jackson with some of the more exciting moments of this match with the ball at his boots. Instead, out from the wing, looking for the header. It'll go on. As that time, Skublock almost able to put one past Levine. We're going to see it here. Down this right-hand side, the right back gets forward, and Skublock gets a nice header on it. Maybe not enough pace on the cross. That's another dangerous opportunity there for USF that goes begging. Another one of the Canadians we've talked about, Scooplock, coming off the bench tonight. The six foot two target out there. A great junior forward. We saw the coach from USF making that change, putting in some more sides to deal with those towering UConn defenders. A 2 0 affair here in Tampa. And the flag will go up. That'll give us an opportunity to check in with our well hydrated sideline reporter in Eric Lopez. Well, Lincoln, it's funny you would say the hydrated because UConn has taken a lot of liquids here on their bench. You wonder with the conditions to being the way they are, comes the second half, if that could become a factor. I talked to them during the week. They, they downplayed the whole humidity factor, saying that it was very hot up in the northeast, but it's nothing like Florida weather. I've also noticed being around the USF bench, their confidence has built it up after being shell-shocked in the first 10 minutes, giving up those two goals. They've gotten some confidence with some chances. We'll see if they could build on that throughout the rest of this match. Yeah, and they certainly have had a few more opportunities here in the final minutes of the opening half after a slow start in which, really, our man Iggy on camera could have just planted his camera pointing at this half of the pitch. Right, well, UConn early on, you know, you can tell that was part of their game plan was to put pressure on USF quite early and they did so and they reaped the benefits every midfielder and every forward for the Huskies in those first few minutes in which they scored their two goals just continue to apply pressure well they're continuing to do so every single time any midfielder from USF gets on the ball he's got two guys around him so they're forced to play long balls trying to beat them down the side flanks Unfortunately, it hasn't been that dangerous for USF. They have had a couple opportunities, uh, some individual beer lines from Jackson there down the right-hand side. But so far, UConn able to preserve that two-goal lead. Tapped up ahead from Ingog. In Blaze Ingog, the freshman out of France. Up to Burnett, had that goal in the fourth minute. Get this scoring started. The other man who has scored tonight on the ball right now, Abdu Banki Jam. That's a good idea, Jam. Just such a high work rate running those channels, doing a good job to create space for himself. Fortunately, that pass doesn't come off. The treatise will come off. Austin De Silva in his place. De Silva, the freshman out of Brookfield, Connecticut, making his 12th appearance. Eighth off of the bench this year with a goal and two assists to his name here in 2017. Nice job by the Bulls to recover. Gomez. Up across midfield. That'll be a toss for the Bulls. Looking for that first goal, Jackson sends it right into the teeth of the back line, and the Huskies deny. We love the ambition for Jackson. 
instead of electing to pass the ball off and give it away, he takes his space and is able to be dangerous. Unfortunately, that final ball in doesn't do much for the Bulls. Eight and a half minutes. UConn hoping to take a multiple goal advantage into the locker room for the halftime. Again, the Bulls in the midst, <coughs> midst of a six-match unbeaten spell. UConn won its last match. It was against Cincinnati. Before that, though, did drop one to number three, Maryland. That Maryland matchup, of course, out of conference against the ACC power. I say ACC, Big Ten. And well off his line, Scott Levine to handle this kick. Reinforcements for the Huskies. DeAndre Brown will come on, the junior out of Springfield, Massachusetts. As he will give John the rest of this opening half off. Into the 18. Patrice is able to turn. And it'll be a corner kick. Our first of the night will belong to the Huskies. We're going to see here is a nice flick off from the substitute to his fellow substitute, Austin De Silva, makes a nice turn and it's a deflection off of the U.S. defense. I mean the U.S.F. defense, excuse me, and it goes out for another UConn corner. All right, that was the freshman De Silva, able to win this corner. Left booty delivery, and it's going to sail all the way across the face, and simply be a goal kick. We see the numbers growing out there on that berm. A great evening to take in college soccer. An 8 o'clock local start time this evening. As the Bulls from their bench, Luis Garza, his ninth appearance. A little under 200 minutes played so far for the sophomore out of El Paso, Texas. As he's in place of Flanagan, we'll get the rest of the first half. Catch his breath. What a difference it would make if USF could find its first goal here in these final six minutes of the opening half. That's unfortunate on, the last, on that last spell of play. Bill Hart trying to make something happen individually and just no one moving for him off the ball, not providing him with any options. Again, Gomez, your Offensive Player of the Week in the American, following his brace against Tulsa from distance, looking for the connection. UConn desperate to avoid the foul that would set up a PK. That was Jackson Kim coming flying in, trying to get that touch on the goal. Physical play now on both ends. Some urgency here, five minutes to go until halftime. Sway Mong, the freshman from Philadelphia. They'll send it out wide. Midfield with Rosales. Bulls waiting for an opportunity to avail itself. Again, more pressure coming from the midfield. It's been causing USF all kinds of problems in possession. Garza on it. With a short run. <laughs> Bulls still on the attack from twenty five to nine, almost point blank. 
You see the pace for the home side, down by two goals in this first half. USF has had a nice bit of, nice bit of possession in the last couple of minutes. They've failed to be really any pr providing any kind of danger going forward. Seems like you kind of dealt with everything they've thrown at them. Gomez in the heart of it all. Each time seems to prefer to go straight ahead. First two goals were scored in the opening eight minutes. Burnett with his first on the year. Jom with his eighth. Top of the 18. Out wide to Bill Hart. Again, just nothing doing for USF. Assume the Bulls would be knocking on that door a few times. Perhaps it'll be the Huskies who actually find a goal before halftime. Well, UConn just doing a great job at hustling and plugging up holes down there. USF again just running out of ideas. But let's see what Bill Hart can do one on one here. The German with three Huskies surrounding him. Around in Gog. Fires one back post. We're going to see a nice individual effort here from Bill Hart. He tries to go back post. Substitute can get nothing on it, unfortunately. We're going to see another sub come on here. This is Alex Crow making his eighth appearance on the year off the bench. Crow, another one of the French natives. A small town named Paris, the senior. Final minute here in Tampa in the opening half. These two clubs even on shots, seven apiece. But Huskies able to find the back of the net early with a pair of goals. Huskies, three of their shots on goal have proven true. USF, two shots on frame, den denied by Levine and the post. Can the Bulls get one more quality look in the final Eight. seconds of this opening Nine. half? Good work there from De Silva. Five, four, three, two, and it looks as though UConn will take a two-goal lead into halftime. Your last two unbeatens in the American and men's soccer, each three wins, no losses, no draws. But it's the Huskies with 45 minutes left tonight with the inside track to those three points on the road in Tampa. not seen a goal outside of the opening eight minutes. Burnett and Jump, your two goal scorers tonight. It's UConn up 2-0. It's halftime here on the American Digital Network. Thanks for tuning in to this special edition of The Rise. The conference released an important announcement today, and that is the addition of women's lacrosse beginning in 2019. The six-team league will be comprised of current conference members Cincinnati, UConn, ECU, and Temple, as well as Florida and Vanderbilt as affiliate members. The American becomes the 16th Division I conference to sponsor women's lacrosse, and it is the first sport in addition to the conference since its reinvention five years ago. So let's get to know the teams that will be competing in the spring of 2019. 
Cincinnati added women's lacrosse as a varsity sport in 2007 and began its first season of competition a year later. The Bearcats are led by six-year head coach Gina Oliver, a three-time All-American at Ohio State. UConn first began playing women's lacrosse in 1997. The Huskies are coached by Katie Woods, who is entering her eighth season on the Storrs campus. A two-time Big East Coach of the Year honoree, Woods is the program's all-time winningest coach with 73 victories. Former North Carolina standout and Duke assistant coach Amanda Barnes is set to lead ECU in its first season of competition in 2018. The Pirates begin their first year of intercollegiate competition next season after the addition of women's lacrosse to its sports roster in March of 2016. Meanwhile, Temple has a storied history in women's lacrosse dating back to its first season in 1975. The Owls have earned 17 NCAA championship berths, winning national titles in 1984 and 88. Current head coach Bonnie Rosen, a 2010 U.S. Lacrosse Hall of Fame inductee, has won 165 during her career, including 97 in her 11 seasons at the helm of the Temple program. Florida has made seven NCAA championship appearances since it began playing women's lacrosse in 2010. The Gators advanced to the national semifinals in 2012 and have won three consecutive Big East crowns. Amanda O'Leary, who has guided Florida since the program's inception, coached at Yale from 1993 to 2007. Her 293 career victories ranks fifth all-time in Division I women's history. And last but certainly not least, Vanderbilt's first season of competition was in 1996. Head coach Kathy Sweezy is entering her 21st season as head coach of the Commodores. She has led Vanderbilt to six NCAA tournament appearances, including a trip to the national semifinals in 2004. The conference will conduct its first women's lacrosse championship in 2019 at a site and date still to be determined. The league will also receive an automatic bid into the NCAA championship. For more information, head to theamerican.org. The UConn women's soccer team recently got a boost as their starting goalkeeper, senior TCU transfer Courtney Hofer, was finally cleared to play. We talked to Hofer about her transfer, her injury, and what it's been like to finally get back out on the field. Hofer came to UConn for her senior season, transferring from TCU. But as a Farmington, Connecticut native, she's more comfortable than ever. To be at home, it, it's really important and it's really cool for me because a lot of people get to see me play that would have never gotten to see me play before. But adjusting to a new team wasn't her only challenge. Hofer was sidelined for the beginning of the Husky season, missing their first nine regular season games with concussion-like symptoms. She and her coaches both had to cope with the injury. Yeah, she was obviously chomping at the bit to get back, which is understandable, um, but making sure that she was ready so when she did come back, it wasn't for one game and then having to take three games off. It's one of my bigger strengths is being able to lead and to not be able to feel like I had a big impact on the team was really wasn't, wasn't easy. Now that she's back, Hofer is able to provide not only her talent, but also her voice. As she said herself, communication is one of her many skills and her teammates have taken notice. She's a very prevalent voice. You can hear it at the half line. Like She even directs me a lot of the time. And it just takes off a lot of pressure from our defenders. She's loud in that, which I think helps everyone a lot. Um, she's always talking to, like, especially the back six. She's always communicating if we have time, if we need to get the ball out. So it's helpful having her back there. But Hofer's game is not limited to her vocal skills. She's a well-rounded player, and she credits this partially to one of her childhood coaches, who just so happens to be a U.S. soccer legend. First person that comes to my mind right now is Tony DiCicco. Um I played for Tony when I was a really little kid, and... He told me I was going to be a goalkeeper one day, and that was in the days where I used to cry when they put me in goal because I hated it so much because I like playing out on the field. But I think, uh, especially with Tony passing away this summer, I really, really think about him a lot this season and how much of an impact he's had on my game. More than anything, Hofer is just glad to be back playing the game she loves. Oh, it's awesome. I mean, I've been playing since I was really little, and it's just this is what my, I'm passionate about, and to be back out there, it's just I feel like I'm back at home. For Campus Connect, from UConn, I'm Brandon Carney. Thanks for tuning in to our Wednesday edition of The Rise featuring all things Olympic sports. Hope you're having a great day. I'm Haley Outen. Let's kick off the show out on the pitch taking a close look at women's soccer. 
UCF continues to lead the way in the American with 16 points and an unblemished 5-0-1 record. USF is not far behind with 15 points, and Cincinnati, while undefeated at 3-0-1, is tied for third in league play with Memphis with 10 points. The Knights took home three conference honors this week and were led offensively by Morgan Ferreira yet again. Ferreira scored nine points last week. Yes, you heard that right, nine points, and led UCF to a pair of 4 nothing shutouts against Houston and SMU. The Knights are number eight in the United Soccer Coaches rankings this week and have not lost a match since the season opener at then number four, South Carolina. We would also like to send a big congrats to Memphis head coach Brooks Monaghan, who won his 100th career conference game this past week in the Tigers' senior day victory over UConn. Monaghan has led the Memphis program for 18 years. Congratulations, coach. Don't forget to check out our game of the week, SMU at UConn. The Mustangs are tied for second in conference play and assists per game, while the Huskies ranked fourth in the American in goals against average. You can tune into this one at 7 p.m. Eastern Thursday, live and for free on YouTube. In men's soccer, UConn and USF remain atop the conference standings with nine points apiece. And lucky for us, we'll get to see them square off on the American Digital Network Friday. The Bulls are also undefeated at home this season, while the Huskies are 2-0 in their conference road games this year. UConn leads the American in goals against average saves and shutouts. USF, meanwhile, has not lost a league match since October 1st of 2016 at Cincinnati. Since 2015, the Bulls are 14-2-2 in the American. Make sure you tune in on Friday. The top spot in the conference standings is on the line. You can catch this one at 8 p.m. Eastern on the American Digital Network. SMU, who ranks third in the American standings with six points, is up eight spots in the United Soccer rankings at number 17. They earned their second conference win of the season, a 2-1 to one victory at Temple last Saturday, and a pair of Mustangs, Jared Rice and Mauro Cicero, were named the conference's weekly honor. In volleyball, all roads lead to Kansas this week as our two undefeated teams, SMU and Wichita State, square off for the top spot in the American. Both teams are 6-0 in league play and have met just three times prior to Friday's upcoming match. Wichita, who is number 22 in the latest AVCA national rankings, leads the all-time series between the two teams 2-1. Two However, they have not met since the 2012 season. We would also like to give a shout-out to Taylor Horsfall, who was tabbed the American Defensive Player of the Week after setting a school record with 44 digs in a five-set win over UCF last Friday, a mark that ranked second all-time in conference history. The sophomore leads all-conference back row players with 7.12 digs per set in league play this year. The ECU women's golf team won its second tournament of the fall season on Tuesday, carding a cumulative score of 17 under par to win the Pinehurst Challenge. Playing on Pinehurst number one, the Pirates fired a closing round of seven under, pulling away from the field after entering the day with a one-shot lead. Four Pirates finished their three rounds under par, led by Dorothea Forbridge and Carly Cox, both of whom shot five under for the tournament and tied for fifth. Up next for ECU is a trip to Louisville, Kentucky for the Cardinal Cup on October 21st and 22nd. The conference announced its first set of swimming and diving weekly awards to start the 2017-18 season, and Cincinnati took home three of the four honors while sweeping the diving accolades. Congratulations to all of our award winners this week, including SMU's Matea Samardich, who earned the Women's Swimmer of the Week nod. That's about it for this week's episode of The Rise. Make sure to check back with us later today for a special Olympic sports announcement. You won't want to miss it. Have a great day, everybody. The University of South Florida's men's soccer team is seeking to defend their regular season championship. With focus, determination, and the help of freshman Adrian Bilhart, they're well on their way. The German native has had an exceptional season thus far. Bill Hart is currently ranked 19th in the country for points per game. He is also the leading scorer on the USF men's soccer roster. Bill Hart credits his success to his teammates. The team is great. He, they're supporting me very well with giving me good balls into the space and um, giving me good opportunities to score. Of course, we have to uh, work harder to like reach our goals this season, and we're looking forward to win the conference, and we'll see how far we will make it. 
Head coach Bob Butehorn believes the team's youth is a strength that is used to their advantage. He also believes Bill Hart's energy is a key element for the team. Their youth, the unknown for them. So they haven't been through all these experiences and they're just living each one of them um, like it means um, the most. Obviously, we get a lot of uh, freshmen bringing different energy, but Adrian brings his own shape and form of it. And I think that uh, the one thing that Adrian does is has a little bit of, of a culture uh, from Germany that's a little bit, maybe a little bit more methodical in the way they work. Um, so that precision and that precise uh, way that he moves and works um, kind of elevates the rest of the group. Although this is Butehorn's first season as the head coach of the University of South Florida's men's soccer team, he is already molding a strong group of players. Of course, it's his, it's his first season here, and um, he's doing a great job so far. Um, the training, uh, the trainings are very intense, and we have to give in every training 100%. Otherwise, he's disappointed. And um, yeah, I think that's why, that's one major point why we are so successful this season. Here at the University of South Florida with Campus Connect, I'm Rachel O'Neill. Time in Tampa. All the fireworks taking place in the opening eight minutes. UConn on the road in the American tonight against their fellow unbeaten Bulls. The Huskies up 2 0. Lincoln Rose, Roland Garen's way with you. And again, Roland, opening half. I don't think we expected either of these two clubs to have a multiple goal advantage. And if one did, perhaps the Bulls on their home pitch and a prolific offense that we've score, seen score at least three goals every match in conference play. Definitely, we mentioned it earlier, you know, a bit of a reversal of roles here. You know, we've seen UConn that sort of sort of sit deep and look to, to, to press on the counter. They do have tons of pace up front, but it's been UConn who have been patient in possession. They've kept the ball well. Uh, they've really been putting tons of pressure on USF, and USF just look, you know, sort of out of sorts going forward. Their movement off the ball hasn't been good, and they've been running out of ideas in the final third. Again, always great support in Tampa from the student body on a Friday evening cheering on their Bulls. Seven shots apiece, three on goal for UConn, two on goal for the Bulls. You look at saves, obviously that means that Scott Levine has come through on two occasions. The fifth year senior making his 64th consecutive start for UConn. He early on really was not a factor. But when he was called upon to make some stops, was brilliant. A kick save, a couple of other stops, and even got some help from the woodwork behind him. Absolutely. He had one little moment of indecision, but mostly he's been solid at the back. You know, he makes those saves whenever he's called upon. He's such a dependable goalkeeper, and he's shown it again today. We almost went the entire half without a corner kick. UConn did finally squeeze one in right before halftime. This year, Huskies out dueling their opponents 57 to 43 on corner kick opportunities but it would not result in a goal the bulls to their credit have kept this now a two goal deficit after being stormed in the opening eight minutes and the bulls have had some quality opportunities starting to build up including through names like ricardo gomez your offensive player of the week in the american well, obviously i think bill hart and jackson as well have been dangerous going forward you know they've been the most exciting players so far Jackson in particular showing some brilliant individual skill to get a shot on goal where Levine came up big. But Bill Hart, you know, you've seen the heart, <laughs> no pun intended, that he has to, to sort of push forward and try to make things happen. Um, I'm looking to both of them to be big in the second half. Again, you talk about Bill Hart, the lone German on this roster, and in part the inspiration of tonight's Socktoberfest affair, a big theme that helped bring a lot of these fans out. They were giving out T-shirts that looked like Lederhosen. They were selling brats. They were featuring a variety of German beverages to sample as well. Uh, but in terms of the action on the pitch, it has been primarily the Huskies sticking to business. This is a UConn team, though, that once they come out of the locker room, they've been virtually even with their opposition. They have conceded six goals after halftime. They have scored six goals after halftime this year. Conversely, the Bulls outscoring their opponents after the half, 14 to 10. Well, barring some incredible play from USF and sort of a, a defensive breakdown from UConn, I mean, it seems that UConn just has a, such a control over this game. Uh, USF has to really make some big changes and sort of pour forward and take more chances to try to get back into this one. Look forward to the start of the second half. We'll see if it could possibly start any quicker than that first half did. 
Well, if it does, this will go down in, in sort of history as being one of the more exciting games so far this season. Again, both these teams uh, tied for the top of the division. And again, a good sign. Munir Saleh able to start the second half. He was able to return to the pitch. And that's why you kind of feel it was probably something he ate pregame, the fact that almost you feel better uh, after falling ill there for a moment. He was able to get back on the pitch to close out the rest of the opening 45 as we're underway. UConn wearing the blue tops, the blue kits, and the all-white USF here at home. Again, we switch ends of the pitch as UConn trying to apply pressure early on on opposing goalkeeper Christian Knight and his back line. We're going to see maybe a big throw here in the box. What can UConn do with it? Garris, the Connecticut native, he's won into the 18, but the Bulls have the answer with the first couple of touches. And it'll be a second-half start for Skublok, who had some quality opportunities in that first half, in part because of his six foot two size. We're going to see a foul be called here. It looked like he went for a header on the ball and potentially may have been kicked in the face. Can't remove it a bit too quickly to sort of see it. We'll try to see here on the replay. We saw him take a turn. We're going to see it here. He puts a head on it. No contact with his face at all. And that's a bit of play acting there from Skublak. You never like to see that sort of dishonesty in the game. So Skublak is back up. Again, he did not start the opening half. Starts here in the second half. The junior out of Canada. Well, again, he made that change. Uh, USF made that change in the first half. They sort of put a big imposing forward of Skublok to sort of battle those, those big center defenders of UConn. And you can see he's got some technical skill as well. Just a great environment for soccer that the Bulls have at Corbett Soccer Stadium. And a breeze this evening, now in the face of UConn. Huskies looking for that elusive third goal. Not going to happen here as they are looking for jump. And that was a close one. That was a good defensive play there. From Bauer Muir. Mar, excuse me. And Lincoln Rose, Roland Garen's way with you. Let's see if we can check in with the third member of our crew and Eric Lopez. Well, guys, kind of being around both teams here as they started the second half for USF, I still think they feel very confident despite the deficit. They felt they got the better of the play towards the end of that first half, had some chances, had that one crossbar. They feel like if they can get that first goal in in the second half, they could put some pressure on this young UConn team that plays seven guys really that are very young. For UConn, they feel very good. They think they're going to get some counter opportunities because USF's going to be pressing here in the second half to even this matchup, guys. All right, thank you very much, Eric. Look forward to hearing from Eric throughout the second half here. As the Huskies hanging on to that two-goal advantage. Bulls with some adjustments there near the end of the first half. Bulls just trying to find that first goal and cut this deficit in half. Trey Jackson certainly went forward some highlight moments, just couldn't find a goal for the Bulls. It's back on his feet. He'll chip one in. As we said, he and Bill Hart were the most dangerous going forward for the Bulls in the first half. Bill Hart, just a freshman, but you see him when he's on the ball. He's a leader trying to make things happen. Fortunately, so far, his teammates haven't provided him the movement and the options off the ball. Corey Cupid, just his second match on the earth, had 13 minutes under his belt before tonight. Again, the freshman out of Trinidad.
Goals from Burnett and Jom so far for the Huskies. See Jom in the center circle, just waiting for a ball he can pounce on. Cupid tries to sneak one in, top of the 18. Still with the Bulls, looking to turn around. A pair of defenders, and Levine is able to come up with the answer. Well, what an individual effort there from Jackson. Again, taking a beautiful first touch to his left-hand side, taking on three, four defenders, getting a shot on goal, but Levine and getting behind the ball, you know, being as reliable as always. Slipped it right under the captain, Jacob Hauser Ramsey. You for Utah, number 12, Alex as you see, Butehorn will be going to his bench soon enough here for the Bulls. It'll be Diego Guerrero with his eighth appearance on the year, the freshman from San Salvador, one of two El Salvador natives on this Bulls roster this year. Levine just catching his breath. Having to come through just a moment ago with his third save. It's Jackson again with a promising look. Well, I was just about to say, USF sort of really picking up the tempo earlier on here in the second half. So Guerrero officially on. 5-5 five, five freshman. Now 38 minutes remaining in this match. We're mindful of the fact that those of you at home tuning in, clock frozen at the moment. As the Bulls just trying to send it back to the plus side of the pitch. Of the boots of Ingog. And Levine able to address this ball under his own terms. Levine, your back to back goalkeeper of the week in the conference. And you gotta love Ray Reed. His team up two goals, not content though, still plenty of coaching. Second winning as head coach in Division One among active coaches. Now we're seeing USF the high press whenever UConn are on the ball, and that's something they needed to do, I think, earlier on in the first half. Even we're seeing UConn having to resort to long balls, and we're seeing USF here win back possession. That's good strategy to sort of pick up the tempo here in the second half. They've had most of the possession so far. will simply swing it along the back line. There are quite a few fans, quite a few students looking to erupt the moment the Bulls can find the back of the net for the first time this evening. Looking for an excuse to get behind their home side. Up ahead, a ball to run on to. Ultimately, Corey Cupid making his first start tonight sends that one towards the goal, but simply becomes a souvenir. He's making his first start, but he's showing lots of confidence on the left-hand side. You've seen him come forward a lot more often here in the second half and trying to provide service for his teammates. And it was a deflection setting up the first corner kick of the night now for the Bulls. We're going to take it short here to, Hill, to Bill Hart. And another deflection off the backside of Petridis. It'll be another corner. See if they have the same approach with Gomez staying available for the short option, they do. Line drive, first touch from UConn. It'll swing outside the far post, and the Huskies survive back-to-back -back corner kicks. And that was actually a beautiful cross in. We're going to see it here again. It's a nice, flat, whipped-in ball, tons of pace behind it, and UConn are lucky to come off without a goal on that one. Or UConn, it looks to be Alex... Cow, who is able 
to get on that ball first. And the senior from Paris. But again, that's the kind of delivery you want to see. A ball, a nice flat cross with whipped in with pace. Fortunately, USF can't capitalize on that one, but still a lot of football to be played here in the second half. They've been the more dangerous side so far. Yeah, we certainly could say, couldn't we, that USF has deserved at least one goal, if not two so far, from some of the great play, including from individuals like Trey Jackson, and then off of that set piece delivery, Gomez putting it right where it needed to be. Absolutely. You know, the, they're showing the right attitude here in the second half. They're showing some more desire. Their movement off the ball has been a bit better. And the Bulls will have to build back up again. I imagine Christian Knight has appreciated the past few moments to simply be a spectator back in his frame. Now we're seeing USF sort of stay patient in possession, not resorting to long balls like they were in the first half. And USF has scored 23 goals this year, even including the two tonight. Huskies tally up to 14 now. It's the fact that UConn has been winning 1-0, 2-0, a stingy defense that still has not allowed a goal in conference play. And that could be the difference between these two otherwise unbeaten clubs at 3-0-0. UConn could take a commanding lead with 12 points on the table. Cupid again, this time with his left boot. Huskies with the first touch. It's another good delivery, though. And Burnett will be able to settle this one. The two goal scorers linking up right there before Jom sends it to the back line. In Gog, up to midfield. And some space to work with out on the wing. He'll take it off a jump. It's good work right there from Bill Hart and a brilliant first touch there. And just could not settle that ball. Scoo block. And eventually, it was really good defending from Blaze and Gog. And after all that, Ricardo Gomez hits the deck and gets the whistle. <laughs> 33 minutes here in regulation. Skublock will lose this pass. And then a moment later, official opting to stop play and award the ball to UConn. USF has brought Gabriel Maniscal on for Bauer Mar. Beautiful ball. Oh, great space. Petridis from 17 looking for the top right 90, but too much behind it as that ball continued to climb. It was a beautiful ball put out wide by John over to Petridis. We're going to see it again here. Nice ball, great run from Petridis. It's a late run in. Nice to fake out the defender there, but Jom sitting on top of the box all by himself. You have to say that that was the better option. And Nico was able to lose Guerrero with a nice stop. Put it back on his right foot. But we remain right where we were in the ninth minute back in the opening half. 2-0. Bulls quickly able to turn the table. And that would have made a nice delivery, but ultimately cutting it off was Levine. That's so unfortunate, by the way, but from UConn not to finish that chance. As we see USF here pouring forward, some good goal keeping by Knight. But you got to say a third goal from UConn might have put this game to rest. Still a half hour to go in Tampa. <laughs> And while the Bulls have an uphill battle, far from impossible, Jackson. And a collision is going to bring out a card. As the yellow awarded to Trey Jackson, the freshman. 
And Jackson full of ambition, trying to pour forward, showing tons of heart to sort of hustle and get on every ball that he can. Unfortunately, taking it a bit too far there. We're going to see the foul here. He gives the ball away and comes in hard. Eventually stamps on the ankle of the UConn player. Earns him a yellow card. Huskies will simply just give it away to the back line of the Bulls. Looking at Maniscal, who again came in about 55 minutes into this match. Maniscal to Pfeffer. Both of our goals coming in that opening minute, or pardon me, that opening 10 minutes. Opening minute would have been brilliant. No. First two goals, the fourth minute and the eighth minute. Now Burnett scored. That began the scoring tonight. Could prove to be the game winner if it's another clean sheet for UConn. UConn have been better so far in the second half, but again, sometimes not really clicking up front. They're attacking three or four. Just that final ball hasn't quite been good enough. Garris looking for a target with this throw. Andrew's 12th appearance on the year, the fifth year senior out of Portland, Connecticut, and a yellow for delay. So Garris picks up that card. A little bit early for time wasting. <laughs> 29 minutes plus. You see the Bulls in a moment. We'll reinsert Avion Flanagan, who got the start in the first half. He was one of the late subs right before halftime coming off. Utah Caution issue to number 27, Andrew Garris in the 61st minute. Entering for the Bulls, number 27, Avion Flanagan. So Flanagan on and plays for Gomez. So off for the first time tonight goes the Offensive Player of the Week in the American. Cupid tries to work it into some space. A lot of blue shirts in the area, and they'll prevail. How about the defender pushing forward as Hauser Ramsey escorts this one across midfield? Jacob will retreat back to his position, just winning some real estate for the Huskies. John back on the ball. Coley will tap it out wide. The Garris. Bulls may have a chance here. 50-50 and Huskies were not simply going to relinquish possession that easily. It will be a throw for the Bulls here in the offensive third. Finally won by Bill Hart. Dylan Greenberg showed some real hustle to track back and defend that ball there. Must have run at least 30, 40 yards to get back and make that slide tackle. You'd like to see that heart and desire from your players. See Cupid begging for the ball. He won't get it. Instead, the pass to the near side of the penalty area. Nobody home. We're seeing him here. Look at that pace. Showing that heart and desire to get back. It's a good challenge on the ball. Unfortunately, couldn't keep it in in play but it's a nice defensive play there from Greenberg Scott Levine came into tonight in goal for the Huskies making every start this year with a point six eight goals against average now you and I saw him when he was about a point five eight a week ago the difference is that matchup against Maryland when they conceded three and Maryland is no slouch you know it's that was always going to be a tough game from them tons of talent coming out of that program on a consistent basis but in conference, the Huskies still have not allowed a goal. Now more than three and a half matches in. And that includes against this prolific attack of the Bulls. And UConn right now just need to settle in possession a little bit, sort of play their game the way they did in the first half. Loose ball to run on for Garris. He knows where to go. 
I'll do Bonky Jump. But unintimidated Gabriel Pfeffer there to thwart the effort, or at least force a delay. Slipping through. Apostle. Back post. Nobody was there to take advantage. Well, what an individual effort there from John and Apostle. Apostle dribbled through a few defenders. We're going to see it here in just a second. One, two, and three defenders. Ball, eventually puts a ball across Bradley across frame, and Petridis making a late run in. Unfortunately, can't get on the end of it. But that's some brilliant play there from Apostle. So the Bulls survive another scare. 25 and a half minutes to go here in regulation. Down by two. 10 4. And 19 coming as a sub for US 7. That shot on if you need it. Two nil at the half, and the question was whether UConn could put it away with a third goal, or whether USF all of a sudden could make this a uh, match. Erase the zero from the scoreboard and find themselves just a goal back. Well, they, they've made it a better match, or they've, they've played a better match so far in the second half. It's just been their final ball that's been lacking. UConn have been able to deal with everything the Bulls have thrown at them. Bill Hart will send it back to that back line in the center circle to Josue Mung. Flanagan should be fairly well rested. That was a good defensive play there. And a good switch of play. Last time we saw a heel from John, it led to a goal. This time a bit farther back. He's never afraid to express himself on the ball. Very technical player. Has tons of flair about him. Loves the game. Loves to express, express himself on the field. He has potentially the game-winning assist tonight as well as an insurance goal. Three points this evening for John. And then there's Mr. Consistent Scott Levine in a league that has a handful of very talented goalkeepers. He has been able to rise to the top of the pack. We've seen good ones in Tulsa and Dallas. That's true, and Levine sort of the picture of composure so far in this match. Stay with USF. Ori Cupid, again the freshman. We mentioned out of Trinidad, the six foot one defender. Working up into the midfield. He's been good so far this second half. Shown real desire to sort of get forward and try to provide some options offensively. Steven Rutterham will be coming off the bench at the next opportunity for USF. Butterham will be making his eighth appearance. He did not have to go very far into the recruiting budget to find him, the native of Tampa. It's Christian Knight again. Entering for the Bulls, number 12. Just working Steven with probably a reasonable Butterham. resting heart rate. Not much stress over the past few minutes. We've seen USF be a bit more defensively sound so far in the second half. UConn have tried to mount some attacks, but the Bulls have sort of dealt with it and been a lot more solid. Each time the Bulls off to go to that back line and trying to progressively build forward. As I said before, they're relying a lot less on the long ball. Resorting in, instead to sort of be patient and try to build build an attack from the back. Time just hoping for a mistake from the Huskies' back line. An opportunity did not avail itself. You see again, great crowd, not just on the berms. Uh, they are looking to make Soctoberfest an annual event, and they're hoping to kick it off with a great comeback here tonight. Oh, 
will simply be a goal kick now with 21 minutes remaining here in regulation. Thrilled to have you tuning in tonight on the American Digital Network. For the most part this year, Thursdays with the women, Fridays with the men. Lincoln Rose Roland Garrensway with you here on ADN. Eric Lopez manning the touch lines. Dom doing some juggling, and now they'll stop play with a man down, and that man is Corey Cupid. Didn't quite see what happened there. It's to be maybe his quad or something like that, or maybe it looks, looks like he's grabbing his calf, his left calf. Certainly understandable. So they'll just try to stretch Corey out. Hopefully he'll be able to continue in a moment. Come back on. Looks like he's going to be okay. Fans of all ages taking in this one, cheering on their bulls. It really is a lift to these players to see their fellow students out to support them. You, know, you get a lot of programs around the country, even, even in football, uh, you know, sometimes they don't get the attendance that sometimes they deserve, and this USF squad does, definitely deserves to be supported by this student body as they're, you know, they give it, they're all in the field, and they have such a great record, and they're at the top of the conference. There's no reason why, you know, they shouldn't have uh, this kind of support. And again, to drive that home, this is an 8 o'clock start locally on a Friday night. And there's no place these fans would rather be. Just hope the result will find a way to favor the Bulls before it's all said and done. Wanting points out of this matchup, even if it's just a draw. Currently tied at nine points atop the table with the Huskies. And staying ahead of SMU. SMU's lone loss we had a couple weeks back at Tulsa. 1-0 in overtime, a golden goal. To the top of the 18, immediately sent back. Well, they've got their legs under them as Guerrero will send it out wide. Back to kill. Guerrero's doing a great job at just playing that sort of deep line number six role. He's sitting just in front of those two center backs and sort of getting getting possession, sort of swinging the ball from left to right, trying to keep it. But at the same time, UConn are doing a great job at clogging the midfield and not giving the Bulls many options. Freddie right, Gill helped keep that possession alive. Let's check back in with Eric. Lincoln, the crowd right now trying to get back into this match. They've really been taken out of it. It's a really great crowd on this homecoming weekend. Football has a big game tomorrow night, and they were very festive prior to this match. But I think UConn has de definitely taken them out of this match by controlling the possession. USF right now not in double figures in shots. Remember, this is a team that averages over 14 shots per match, and they've been held by this UConn defense. Thank you, Eric. Big corner kick opportunity here for the Bulls. And again, it looks like they will come away empty-handed, finally headed out by Ngoc. Well, another opportunity goes begging for the Bulls. They don't have much time. They need to start capitalizing on their chances. USF scored, or pardon me, UConn scored both its goals in about an eight-minute span, really, in about a five-minute span. Uh, within the opening eight minutes of this match. Since then, it's been a push. Gomez back on. He's being subbed off at the end of the opening half. So he should be rested for this final 17 and a half. Now I mentioned he had two goals against Tulsa, just three on the year. But he was the man they trusted with a penalty. UConn throwing numbers, cross, back post, punched out by Levine. Bulls still applying pressure from 18, it'll soar high. 
and Levine will simply have a goal kick coming up. And that was a big time opportunity for the Bulls. One of the more dangerous attacks in the game, much less in the second half. We're going to see it again here. Some aggressive play down the left-hand side. Good job to stay tough there and get in a quality delivery. But Levine, again, coming out and being strong, punching away. At the end, the shot goes over. UConn are out of danger. Bradley Farias had the delivery. Was looking for his fourth assist on the season. But Levine intervening. Bulls back at it. Still down, just two goals. So they'll swing it back over to Freddie Gill. He's come off the bench tonight, the freshman out of West Palm Beach. Hoping for some chaos among all those Huskies. A lot of jostling back and forth. Some fiery exchanges there. You think Burnett was reminding him uh, what happened back in the fourth minute? I'd imagine there's some talking going on. Within 30. Laid off by Scublock. This could be trouble. Shot across frame again. The result the same. Bulls threaten, but no result on the scoreboard. What an opportunity there again for the Bulls. We're going to see here. It's Farias who gets on the end of that one. He tries to take, he actually turns quite nicely. Tries to put the ball in at the back post, excuse me. Unfortunately, again, it just goes wide. There was nothing Levine could have done about that had found that vulnerable back end of the frame. He simply looks on and has some good fortune. That's tough for USF. Two dangerous opportunities for them that they don't capitalize on. Levine getting closer to a seventh shutout this year. UConn has six wins. All of them are via shutout. Their two overtime matches have both ended in a draw. But each of them were able to produce goals. UConn just trying to extend this stretch. We got to keep the sheet clean here in the American. Let's see if UConn can win a corner kick. Just the second of the night for the Huskies. And this is a good opportunity for them to put this game within, without, or far from reach from USF. And it's going to be Petritus to take it. What kind of delivery can he provide for the Huskies? Two assists this year for Nico. And he had a couple of opportunities there, but the Bulls will catch a break. That was actually a wonderful delivery and just so unfortunate that a Husky couldn't get it on the end of that one. Full speed ahead with Freddie Gill. Gomez. Gomez from 19 denied. About a foot off of his boot by Sheck Stefan Coley. And Coley showing some good, a good defensive work rate. Again, he's being double teamed. He tracks back, gets a nice boot on it. Levine does a great job to save it from a corner kick. Yeah, kept that ball on the line. I don't know how Coley got his boot on that ball. Well, he showed some brilliant recovery speed there. And again, this UConn midfield just does a great job at, at, with, with their commitment to track back and defend. And 
Well, the Bulls have had opportunities tonight. It's not a matter of UConn simply silencing them. The problem is getting that ball across the goal line. And really, UConn have only had, you know, sort of two really clear-cut opportunities, and they took advantage of those. And so far, the Bulls have had a couple of opportunities on goal, and they just haven't. That's really been the difference in this game. You have to take your chances because, you know, you never know when you're going to get another one. So free kick will be handled by Gomez. Senior had a goal on a free kick against Tolson. Set everybody in motion towards the top of the 18. And the Huskies sent it right back. Similar spot. Back into the masses. Again, return to sender. And for UConn, Alex Cow finally on that ball. Sends it back up to midfield. Again, just so many numbers back for UConn. Doing a great job to not provide any space to any any one Bulls player. Monk. And just beyond the big toe of Scoobloch. That was actually a decent ball in. Unfortunately for Scoobloch, can't get one of his long legs on the end of that one. Well, Munir Saleh will re-enter this match. Again, good to see that he's been able to participate much of this evening. He comes on for fellow starter Sheck Stefan Coley. Final 10 minutes of regulation between the two teams that were atop the standings. Coming into tonight in the American. Each three wins, no losses, no draws. Perfect through their first three matches in conference. At UConn early on the road tonight. Able to land a couple of potentially decisive blows in this match. Burnett followed by Jom. For Burnett, his first goal. For Jom, he does it again. His eighth on the season. And, of course, we came into tonight talking about the contrasting styles, UConn's defense, the prolific offense of USF. And sure enough, we made the mistake of putting that down in ink. <laughs> we'll use pencil next time on those graphics. Well, you know, we, not, not to discount this attack for UConn, you know, we knew that there was tons of talent all over this field. Um, so you just, I think we just caught, USF just caught UConn on one of their best days. Uh, just the tons of work rate in the midfield, really commitment to sort of defending and attacking as a team. And then, again, individual brilliance from, from uh, Burnett and John uh, has really been the difference in this one. Again, with all that said, Scott Levine and that back line of the Huskies certainly are living up to expectations. They've been tested a few times by these Bulls in all white tonight. As Levine has come through when needed. USF has actually outshot UConn 11 to 8. Shots on frame, even at three apiece. And USF's had one more corner kick, 3 to 2 this evening. All of them coming here in the second half. Looking for the deflection off the header, and the story of the night, it goes one. Well, you'd like to see, you know, uh, USF work the ball out wide a bit more. They've shown some success. They have two tall forwards in there, and Farias and Scublock. And we see it here. They work the ball down the right-hand side. And Farias tried to get on the end of that. Unfortunately, couldn't get enough on it. And it's another UConn goal kick. The senior, the most recent bull with a chance to cut this deficit in half. Bulls again. Beautiful. Correct. Right through the middle. Good block. Great defensive header. Right back, though, to the Canadian. Great individual effort there from Scoob block. 
Showed a good job, sort of create a little bit of space for himself, try to get a chipped in ball to Ferris. We're going to see it here. It was a beautiful first touch. Here he is, little dinked ball in, but a beautiful defensive header as well. And denied by Cal. Tritas up ahead. John just wanted one quick touch as he was looking for De Silva. And now John will try to go to work to get this ball back. Over the top. And just heavy enough for Levine to be able to get to it inside the 18. Well, time of the essence, and it's down to about six and a half minutes for a comeback for the home side Bulls, who had never settled for anything less than three points each night in conference play. Treat us back to jump. No burden on the Huskies to score. They're happy with possession. will correct the momentum of that ball. Bulls still with chances. Great turn from Apostle. Cross midfield. And again, the Huskies, you imagine, won't try to force anything. Although a pass from De Silva would have made it interesting with Jom in the area, you know he would have put the punctuation on that and the night as a whole if he could make it 3-0. Well, I'd like to see sort of uh, De Silva sort of keep possession, maybe not whipping across so easily. There's only five and a half minutes left. Still looking to eliminate the shutout. Scoobon. He's got to pull the trigger there. He had one or two windows of opportunity to have a shot. Fortunately, just waiting for... Six foot two target will head it wide, and he looked every bit of six foot two when he tried to turn on that ball at his feet. Well, he's a technical player, as you saw. He just took one too many touches. He had one or two windows to have a shot. Mm -hmm. We're going to see the chip ball in here, and Farius again trying to get on the end of it. Scoobloch thought he was going to get it, but Farius again just getting a touch. Flanagan eventually trying to get on it, but it's going to go out for a corner. Yeah, last touch by the Huskies. Fourth corner kick of the match. All of them this half for the Bulls. This time they'll go long. Gomez. Towards the back post. Punched out by Levine. Reliable goalkeeping there from Levine. And the Huskies cannot breathe easy. Another one skirts across the frame. And simply harmlessly will be a goal kick. Well, that was actually a great delivery there from Steven Rutterham. Here we go. It's like a driven cross across the six-yard box. What else could you want? There's three players from the USF back post. None of them can get a touch on it. That's so unfortunate after such great delivery. A screamer right past three of his teammates. time a tad heavy Levine will feel the pressure to scoop it up three and a half minutes separate UConn from going 4-0 and 0 something they flirted with last year but after winning their first three matches in the American year ago they would then fail to pick up a victory in their final four matches in conference play and rugby not officially sponsored by the American. It's a solid run, though. Not sure what's happening here. It looks like a free kick. Yeah, so there was a whistle, and there you see the confirmation to halt the clock. It looks like an illegal pass back. It looks like one of the Huskies passed back to Levine. He touched it, so now it's an indirect free kick inside the 18-yard box. Big chance here from UCF for USF. You know, I've gotten years without saying this, and then I saw this just last week. Gomez, top right 90 denied again by the hardware. Well, that was a beautiful free kick opportunity. It was a bending ball into that upper 90 and just hits the crossbar. So unfortunate. But it's not over here. Gomez 
Keeps it in the area. So again, let's remind you the situation. The one time you can really have a foul that doesn't set up a PK in the area is if your defense with their boots pass the ball back to the keeper who uses his hands. And that's just a mental mistake there from Levine, and it could have been a costly one. And fortunately for USF, it's a brilliant free kick opportunity that just goes begging again. And you can go forever without saying that. I saw one in San Antonio last Saturday. Set up a more awkward angle, less desirable than what they saw right there for USF. Inside the 18, right footed delivery, back heel delivery, and a highlight denied. Oh, what a brilliant effort. But in the end, Levine was there ready to deny. Bradley Farias a chance to appear on your nightly highlight reel. Unbelievable from Farias. Beautiful scorpion kick, essence of Olivier Giroud. But what a brilliant save for Levine. He comes up big again on the corner kick. Unbelievable finish here with two and a half minutes to go. If this proves to be a clean sheet for Levine, it'll be a memorable one. The Bulls have shown him everything. Two minutes remaining. Silva, jump. A little envious after seeing that scorpion effort. That was just unbelievable. Beautiful bit of inventiveness there. Just trying to get a bit on it. He gets enough of his boot on it to, to, to uh, direct it towards frame. But again, Levine, take a bow, son. What a brilliant save. Well, they don't mind a short corner here. They just want to possess... Avoid the yellow on a delay. And again, the Huskies will surrender this ball back over to Knight. How many times have we said the name Christian Knight here in the second half? He's made some big stops. You know, uh, you kind of been a bit toothless going forward, but Knight has come up when he's been needed. Has not been needed much, though, since coming out of the locker room. His Bulls have applied pressure on the Huskies. Desperate to get that zero off the scoreboard. Flanagan will give it up. They need two goals. They still need two goals. Simply a goal kick here will take much of the time down. You got to say, you know, that wasn't really the best bit of decision making there from the center back just hands over possession back to UConn UConn comes to Tampa scores a goal in the fourth minute from Burnett another goal four minutes later from Abdul Baki Jam and after eight minutes to start this match full of fireworks Opportunities for more goals rear their heads, but your final tonight is going to be 2 0. And that final kick should do it. It does. The Huskies. Create some separation on the table. UConn still perfect. Four wins, no losses, no draws as they stand alone atop the table in the American. Well, it was a bit of a nervy ending there for UConn, but they're so defensively sound throughout most of it. They have two opportunities, one-on-one, -on -one, the goalkeeper. They take advantage of those. USF, unfortunately, can't come out with the win here at home and it was a brilliant finish there as we see from Abu Bakr Jam. That was insurance from Abu Bakr Jam. He has the game winning assist, the game winning goal from Burnett, his first on the year. Scott Levine does it again with another shutout. Now his seventh on the season. Huskies take it here on the American Digital Network.